Hi guys, this is Vintage Kohler and I'm going to make a video to explain the difference the real difference between a siphon jet a classic siphon jet toilet or tradi I'll say traditional siphon jet toilet and a traditional blowout toilet the difference is not in the flush necessarily it's true that a lot of siphon jet toilets flush like a blowout but the difference there's a much more technical difference than that. So this is my 1948 Kohler catalog, and you'll see the um, Kingston on the left and the, the blowout toilets, the Stratton, Sifton, and Suffield on the right. And so I'm going to zoom in on cross-sections of the Stratton. Okay, hopefully that's good. So if you look at these two drawings, you'll see some differences, mostly with regard to the trapway. For the most part, the bowls are the same. The water levels are the same, and you probably can't see, but even the water jets are the same. You can't see it, but both of these toilets have concealed priming jets, and that's what they're called in this catalog, that are located right about here, and they spray water up the trapway. You'll see that the Kingston has a trapway that comes up and over. It comes up over this dam. Up, it comes up, down, and then out. And you'll notice that the outlet of the toilet is lower than the lip of the trap, what I call the lip of the trap, in the bowl. And that's very important because in order to have a toilet that can actually siphon, the outlet of the toilet has to be lower. This point has to be lower than this point. Otherwise, you have a toilet that cannot siphon. And so, that's what you have to have in a siphon jet toilet. The blowout toilet is different. And the idea with a blowout, a blowout toilet is you're only using water pressure from the water pipes to blow waste out of the toilet. So if you're only relying on water pressure to clear the toilet, you don't want any more bends in the trapway than you need to restrict that, that uh, flushing action. So a blowout toilet trap, at least on a wall-hung toilet, is much simpler, and it simply goes up and then straight out. And you'll notice that the entire opening of the, the outlet is higher. It's actually higher than the water level in the bowl. So it's a very straight path for the water jets to simply blow the contents out of the bowl and they kind of create what's called a venturi action which forms a suction right here that helps suck the contents out of the bowl. And um, so this type of toilet cannot siphon unless there was something wrong with the plumbing. But um, generally speaking, this kind of toilet cannot siphon. And as we get into floor mount toilets, you'll see the difference again just have to find the swift. Okay, let me make sure. Okay, good. So, let's see. Nope, actually that's not, not where I want to be. I 
can I not find the Swift? Oh. Okay, it is where I thought it was. Okay. So. Here is a cross section of a floor mount blowout toilet. And this is a cross section of a floor mount siphon jet toilet. And what you'll see is that in the siphon jet toilet the trapway goes up and it goes through some kind of kinky bends here and then out through the floor. On the blowout the trapway goes up and then straight down. Now on the blowout the outlet is below this part of the trap so theoretically it's capable of siphoning but the odds of this kind of toilet siphoning are pretty pretty small because the water in a trapway like this with no bends in it as the water comes up and over this dam in the trap it's very hard to fill this piece of the trap very full of water without any air bubbles because unless you can fill this part of the trapway and eliminate all the air bubbles this trapway won't siphon so the reason that the trapway is shaped like this is so that the path is as free from obstruction as possible because again you remember you're depending on just water jets to drive everything out of the bowl so you don't want a lot of bends in the way. The reason that there are bends in a siphon jet toilet is so that the water comes up and it spills over and it's going to hit this sharp bend here and what that does is it causes the water to slow down and kind of pile up and fill this part of the trapway and what that does is it helps eliminate air bubbles, air pockets in the trap if it limit if it can fill this part of the trap completely and eliminate the air pockets then it can start the siphon so you need this you need a certain amount of restriction in the trapway in order for this trap to siphon like it's supposed to so that is the main difference between a blowout and a and a siphon jet floor mount toilet And you'll see, actually, even today, you'll see that a lot of flushometer floor mount toilets have a trapway that looks basically just like this, even though they're not marketed as blowouts, but for the most part they function as blowouts. Some uh, pressure flush toilets even have a trapway that looks like this. So, uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.